Thanks for clicking. The Bank of Canada and the Canadian government are going to be working together to purchase Canada mortgage bonds. This according to a recent market notice on the Bank of Canada's website. That's great. Now, news that the government planned on buying up Canadian mortgage bonds isn't anything new. We learned during November's fiscal update that the government was going to be buying up mortgage bonds as a means of getting more money into the banks to lend out for rental construction. Yet, what is new is what was announced by the Bank of Canada, and again, not picked up by the media, instead focusing on more big picture items, in that the bank intends to create a new repurchase or secured lending program for the government's Canadian mortgage bond portfolio, meaning a way for the government to use those purchased bonds as collateral to take out loans from the Bank of Canada, with all of the money creation that that would entail. I talk to them a million times, they don't listen. So what I want to do today is go over the Canadian mortgage bond program and the government's plan to start buying up bonds discuss the Bank of Canada's plans to create a new repurchase or secure lending program, and discuss why it's more than a little concerning, and then go over a few remaining unanswered questions. Answers to these questions may be covered at the Bank of Canada's press conference at its rate announcement on Wednesday. We will obviously be covering that press conference and the rate announcement on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into Canadian mortgage bonds. On to Canada Mortgage Bonds, or CMBs. CMBs are bonds issued by the Canada Housing Trust, which acquires mortgage-backed securities from approved sellers, banks, etc., which it pays for by issuing bonds. Mortgage-backed securities, as we're all well aware, is basically a collection of mortgages rolled into a single security. So the banks have any number of mortgages on their books. They roll them all together, package them together into one single security, and can sell those mortgages on the open market. This is, admittedly, a little confusing, so let's put it all together. The Canada Housing Trust issues a bond or a promise to pay to investors and investors give money to the Canada Housing Trust. The Housing Trust takes that money and buys up mortgage-backed securities, or a collection of mortgages from the banks. The CHT is paid the money from those collection of mortgages, which it can use to pay off those bond investors, pay off those investors that bought those bonds. On the one hand, the banks are happy as they're getting those mortgages off their books and making a hefty profit in the meantime. And on the other hand, the investors, banks, insurance companies, asset managers, etc., are happy to get a piece of the Canadian market without the risk of actually having to enter into that lending market. Smart. In fact, these investors that buy these bonds really don't risk anything, as these bonds are fully guaranteed by CMHC and carry the full faith and credit of Canada and constitutes a direct, unconditional obligation of Canada. So, investors buy up these bonds from the Canada Housing Trust, which uses that money to buy up mortgage-backed securities, takes the money from those collections of mortgages, and pays back the bond investors. And these bonds are 100% guaranteed by the Canadian government. But, as mentioned, the Government of Canada now plans to also become a major investor in these bonds. Yep, buying up the bonds of which they already guarantee. Well, that sounds bad when you say it like that. Okay. Let's take a look. The government indicated that this plan was to allow low-cost financing for the construction of multi-unit residences, supporting an increase in an additional 30,000 rental apartments per year. So, the government is going to be buying up these bonds, which were issued through the purchase of mortgage-backed securities. So, in essence, the government is buying up these mortgage-backed securities, buying up mortgages from the banks to get those mortgages off of the books of the banks, giving the banks more money to lend out for residential housing construction. It's the least we could do. So, the government, using the CHT as an intermediary, buys up mortgages from the banks, giving the banks more money to lend out for residential housing construction, to lend out for rental apartment construction. But, and this is the big but, is the line listed in the Bank of Canada's operational announcement, mainly that the Bank of Canada is intent on creating a repurchase agreement or secured lending program for the government's CMB portfolio. There is a fair bit to unpack here, but I promise it's worth it. Let's briefly recall what a repo is. A repurchase agreement. A repo agreement is an agreement between two parties, usually between financial institutions, to sell a security to sell an asset with the promise to purchase it back later. So, if RBC is low on cash but has a lot of collateral, they will put up one of their bonds to TD, TD will lend them the cash, and RBC makes the promise that it will repurchase that bond, that collateral, from TD at a later date. That's a little simplified, but in essence, that's what a repurchase agreement is. Which begs the question, why would the government need a repo program set up by the Bank of Canada? Oh, you don't want to know! 
Is the Canadian government going to be low on cash but have lots of collateral available and have to go to the Bank of Canada for a short-term cash injection like RBC did in the previous example? No, they have the bond market available for that very purpose. In fact, I suspect that the Bank of Canada used the term repo, which usually means short-term loan, a bit more liberally than it should have, which is why the bank also added a secured lending program in its plans meaning the government, which just used general revenue to buy up those Canada mortgage bonds from the market, could take those bonds, put them up as collateral at the Bank of Canada, and get a longer term secured lending loan. So the government buys up those bonds from the banks, gives those bonds to the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada provides a longer term loan on that collateral, which appears counterintuitive, given that the Bank of Canada has and is set to lose money over the coming years. As such, it's more likely than not that the Bank of Canada will be printing this money to loan to the government, as it does with other repo and secured lending agreements. So, it's more likely than not that the Bank of Canada will be printing this money to loan to the federal government collateralized on these Canadian mortgage bonds that the government just bought up, which, all things being equal, would expand the money supply. Yeah, so what? Well, according to Parliament and thousands of years of history, large amounts of new money created if spent in the economy could lead to inflation. So in summary, the Canadian government is going to be buying up mortgage bonds to get more money into the banks, money which can be used to lend out for rental construction. However, the Bank of Canada, even before the program starts, is already preparing a program where those bonds can be used as collateral to lend out more money. Yet, a number of questions remain. First and foremost, why does the government need to inject $30 billion into the mortgage market when the banks still have $120 billion on reserve at the Bank of Canada? Second, and related, through what mechanism is the Government of Canada going to ensure that the banks use that money specifically for rental mortgages? Is the government only going to be buying up mortgage-backed securities composed solely of rental mortgages? By the Bank of Canada's own account, they only plan on buying up 5- and 10-year fixed-rate mortgages, and will not be buying up floating-rate or variable-rate CMBs. I can say from experience that investors, in general, prefer variable-rate mortgages, as the penalties for breaking them are so low, which is also why the real estate industry loves them, but that's a discussion for another time. And third, if the Bank of Canada is going to be printing money again, if they're going to be buying up these mortgage bonds, buying up these mortgage bonds from the Canadian government, injecting money into the banking system, granted through a number of intermediaries, then isn't that inflationary? The Bank of Canada does say that we are going to be getting a new web page on the purchase and the holding of these Canadian mortgage bonds, and we'll obviously wait to get more details on this repo purchase, which I don't think is aptly named, or secured lending program that the bank is expected to unveil at a later date. We'll obviously have an update out on those details on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.